Buongiorno, ice cream lovers again. Welcome to Bologna, Italy. We're actually in the uh, Museum of Gelato, based in the Carpegiani headquarters. Fantastic facility. We've done a tour here yesterday. It's so much to see. Really recommend if you're ever near Bologna, stop in, organize a tour. It's pretty awesome. The reason why we're here is I um, have got the great honor to be selected as one of the judges for the Gelato Festival World Masters. 2021 here and it's a pretty fascinating process so I just wanted to show you a little bit behind the scenes of how the gelato was uh, shipped here produced um, again we're based here in the museum so they've moved a few things away but in the prep room over here so there's been nearly 3,500 entries that are basically uh, have their finals and their regional finals in their particular countries and those that are lucky enough to get their entries come to the final, they either send their products frozen um, or they actually um, give instructions to the gelato chefs here at Carpajani to make or recreate their product. This is the kind of behind the scenes where all the gelato was actually made and then prepped for presentation. So as the uh, entries are sorted out, uh, they're prepped in here. There's about 20 or 30 cups presented. Some of them are just a plain flavor without any variegates or crumble or, or toppings, and some of them are actually quite intricate. So the flavor is recreated here yesterday, uh, the day before. Uh, again, whether it's the ingredients that the actual gelato maker has specified, uh, or they may just give the chefs here a recipe to do. Apparently there's a lot of calling back and forward, there's a lot of Zoom calls, hey this doesn't look right, because these products can make or break a business. So as we were talking to some of the administrators of the festival, they were saying that businesses are made and broken by results that they get here at the uh, festival. All of the ice cream, uh, gelato, sorbets, a lot of non-dairy stuff is also prepped and sent in. And then we go through the judging process. And so you can see behind me here, we've got a live stream set up. It's actually really cool. Very envious, old Frank uh, doesn't kind of keep up. So we come up to the stage area where you've got multiple cameras. One is facing this way. We've got some hosts here standing in front of these beautiful World Master Gelato trophies. That, again, every one of these 32 flavors is after. You can see these big screen TVs. And that's pretty awesome because what happens is we actually live stream with the gelato maker wherever they are. Now, we have received entries from South Africa, from Asia, from throughout Italy and Europe, the United States. It's actually been quite amazing. What happens in the judging process is one of the criteria is they need to send in a video to describe their flavor. So we'll go up here. All the judges are from all over the world here. Um, they put me at the back. I don't know why that is. So what happens first off is we actually watch the video on the screen and we rate the video. This is the only uh, score that is actually public that the gelato maker can see. So we have a range of between one and 10 that we actually hold up and judge their video, their explainer video. Then we actually taste the product. And so you'll see this product coming out. Again, 32 flavors over the two day period. And then we go through this process of judging quite analytically each sample. And you can see from, let's say we've got the South African uh, contingent coming up this afternoon. So here is our video presentation. That's generally one out of 10, as I mentioned, but then we have a one out of 40 uh, grade of flavor. We have a one out of 30 on structure and then a one out of 20 on creativity. And so there's a real balance here. It's not just about taste, it's about the taste and the complexity of taste, but it's also about structure as well, how the product uh, feels in the mouth, the consistency of it, whether it's fresh, whether it's too cold, and then you've got your creativity. You don't have to be overly creative. In fact, some of these flavors are quite simple and the beauty is in the simplicity of the flavor as well. And then we basically total that out of 100 and all of those marks go towards uh, the final, which is actually our time here tonight, 10.30 at night. But let me tell you, it's been an absolute treasure, 
not only to be able to taste all of these different cultures from around the country, around the world, because each of them has their own influences. Um, in the Philippines and in Southeast Asia, we're tasting a lot of taro, sweet potato. We've been tasting a lot of spices, mango and saffron from uh, the Saudi Arabia area. Interestingly, the US has been sending through a lot of very traditional American flavors like apple pie uh, and blueberry, uh, salted caramel as well. Oh, one question that we had was, uh, what, do you do to, what do you do to actually clean the palate between ice creams when typically you'd have a sorbet? Basically comes down to saltine crackers. It's unsexy as it can be, but it does clean the palate very well. Water, juice, the whole box and dice, it's been fantastic. So you'll probably see that in the last couple of videos, and maybe a couple more to come here, that the whole area in Europe, and particularly Italy, is very rich in ice cream and frozen dessert flavor and history. It's been quite the experience. Hopefully you've enjoyed a little bit of the uh, video that we've taken here. Again, love to see your comments. Hit subscribe down there. We uh, love bringing you this ice cream and frozen dessert content. And as we always say, keep on scooping. We'll see you in the next video.